transferring spirits and stuff like that. I used to hear people talk about to give their testimony as if, you know, giving their life to God, we, we, you know, that's like, you know, like they really messed up. You know, so you know, cause back in the day, if I ain't had no money, I'd just go do that. You know, you just lucky I'm saved. You know, I'm like, wow, really? Then are you really saved if 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 if, if, I'm, if this best guy is just you know lucky that you happen to be you know? Let's let's look at scripture. Amen. Let's go over to Acts, Acts three one and nine, Acts three, verse one through nine. Acts three one and nine. It says, now Peter and who? John. John went up together uh -huh. to the temple at the hour of prayer. Okay. The ninth hour. Mm -hmm. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. Stop right there. There was a what? A man lame from the mother's womb. Someone either underline that or write that down. Lame from his mother's womb. That word lame means to be weak, crippled, disabled. Weak, crippled, or disabled. Uh -huh. Okay, so he was lame from his mother's womb, meaning that he was crippled. Lame and weak from his mother's womb. It's almost like you see those people who are, uh, you ever see the people that go on with cerebral palsy, uh, going with uh, uh, their limbs all bent over, and uh, they're born with these different defects. Mm -hmm. This man was born that way. Mm -hmm. And every single day they will put him at the gate, at the temple gate, instead of taking him into the temple. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. Well, he can go get his healing or supposedly be able to go inside and get his healing. Instead, they will put him on the outside of where he can get his healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people will go by every day and get a word from the from the priests or the Pharisees or whatever, and they get this word and they come out and just drop some money into the person's bucket. Mm -hmm. My thing is, some people have gotten so comfortable being uh, crippled and, and lame to the point that because they feel that if they get free, they got to give up a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, they say that the guy was lame from the moment he was born. He was born lame. He was born this way. Amen. Amen. Say so he was born this way. He was born this way. He was, and then what did it say? From his mother's womb, was he carried? Whom? Uh -huh. They laid daily at the gate of the temple, uh -huh. which is called beautiful. Uh -huh. To ask aid from those who entered the temple. So that means he was asking for money from those every time they go into the temple. Instead of saying, pray for me, instead of saying, uh, I need healing, instead of saying, I need deliverance, instead of asking for what he really needed, he was asking for money. Right. Okay. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, yeah. asked for aim, uh -huh. and fixed his eyes on him with John, Peter, and Peter. Right, right there. So he said he fixed his eyes upon John. Now, look, that word fix means to focus on, to lock the eyes. To, so Peter began to focus on this lame man. Right. And 5 says, and he gave heed unto them. And the lame man thought that they were going to give him some money. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. right. He said, gave heed to them, expecting to receive something from them. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. 6 says, then Peter said, silver and gold I have none. Mm -hmm. But what, I, what such I have, I give unto thee. I give unto thee. In the name of who? Jesus Christ Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Yahshua Yamashiach. In the name of Jesus the Messiah of Nazareth. Amen? Amen. He says, rise up and walk. Uh -huh. Did not the scripture state that every that every knee and every tongue, that every knee and every tongue shall bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meditate on that when you get home. In seven states, it says, and it's uh, they said, silver and gold I have none, but, in, it just, but then it goes in, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Seven. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up immediately. His feet, ankle bones, his feet and ankle bones received what? Strength. The moment he said, in the name of Jesus, up and rise, what happened? Deliverance took place when? Immediately. But why do when we go certain places they tell you that you got to do this, do that, do that, and, and, and believe God for this and believe God for that, and, and, and once you believe God, this will happen. But when Peter and, and, and John began to take control and authority with the name of Jesus, that every that with the authority of the name of Jesus, they pulled the guy up, and the moment they did it, Jesus stepped in and took complete, complete control. So the guy didn't have no time to doubt. Because what? Jesus stepped in. Where two or more gathered together in my name, there I'm in the midst. Yeah. What happened? When Jesus, when they stepped and spoke Jesus' name, what happened? Jesus stepped in and Jesus healed him. Right. 
You see, although it looked as if Paul and Silas and Paul and John, and it looked as if they probably did the healing, but what happened was they said Jesus, and Jesus stepped in, and the healing took place because there's healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So as we begin to look at this healing taking place, we realize that although he was born crippled and lame, Jesus stepped in and changed the story. He broke every generational hereditary and bloodline curse off this guy. And what happened? They said that he was able to, he jumped up. He leaped, he jumped, and started worshiping God. <laughs> then they said that after he jumped, leaped, and worshiped God, he walked into the temple and started leaping, jumping, and worshiping God. But the religious people didn't understand it. <laughs> Some people said, oh, wait a minute. Some knew that he was the guy that was sitting at the desk, all, I mean, sitting at the front gate every day, all crippled. But then... Some people say, wow, he looked like him, and he had to make sure he made everybody know, it's me. It's me that Jesus Christ of Nazareth came in and healed my leg. You remember when my leg, when, when I had to have John and Pete and John and, and I, no, I'll make up some names. You remember when I had to have uh, uh, Jim and John, I still, I can't, can't use John because John is in the book. You remember when I had uh, Phil and, 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 I don't know why I keep going. <laughs> you remember when I <coughs> had Phil and Jack. Always come and bring me to the gate every day, and I would get all this money, and then I probably would have to give Phil and Jack a little something because they brought me here every day. Right. But then all of a sudden, I ran into some people that actually really believed in healing and delivering, actually really believed and practiced what they preached. Right. Actually, they decided instead of giving me some money, they decided to tell me about Jesus. And when they told me about Jesus, right. what took place is I began to receive healing in my leg. Right. Next thing you know, my legs was able to shake. Mm -hmm. I was able to jump. I never moved my legs before. The closer right. I got to moving my legs and dragging them around or doing it like this. Right. But all of a sudden, I got power in my legs. Amen. When I get the power in my legs, now I can run. Do you know how it feels to be born lame and never ever having the opportunity to run? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, he's running, he's leaping, he's jumping, he's exercising his legs, and he's saying, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because he knew that Jesus brought him out of all yeah. his situations. Yeah, right. That he don't have to about it anymore. Matter yeah, of right. fact, he can be able to see God because if God delivered my, me from birth, from this situation that I dealt with from birth, imagine they said it was a man. Uh -huh. It wasn't a kid. That means he spent half his life crippled. Can you imagine spending half your life crippled? Can you imagine being like the lady with the issue of blood? She spent 12 long years. She did everything she could dream or imagine, and nothing could get her a breakthrough. But she heard about a man. Amen. She heard that the Messiah came in. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Certain scriptures change. Some say there's the end of his cloth. Some say that if I can just do this. So all they said is, I can just get into the presence of the word of God. Then I can be made whole. Then when I realized that I can be made whole, can you imagine spending half your childhood not enjoying your childhood? But all of a sudden you become a man. You, you become an adult. And all of a sudden you look and you're still thinking about all the times that you, you spent never really enjoying life. Watching all the kids run out outside, ride their bikes, do everything, but now all of a sudden, you got the opportunity to do it. So I can imagine why he had to worship God. Because he spent all his time not knowing all of this. He spent all his time being set at the gate, set at the door of a church every single day, but no one would tell him about Jesus. Can you imagine this? Someone get delivered from what you've been struggling with for a long time and you come close to your deathbed and all of a sudden they say, you know what, I had that before. Mm -hmm. You know those people that do that. You know you know how them people are. You, you, we ran into some people like that. You know, I, I had that before. You know, you're like, well, you should have told me about that. I can still have my house. Mm -hmm. You should have told me about that. My son can still be here. Mm -hmm. You could have told me about that. My son could be this. My daughter could be this. My people, you know. It, why are you holding back these things? But yet, they brought this man to church every day and not bring him in. They just set him at the front door. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But then it took some men who walked with the man who created everything. Amen. Woo, man. Hallelujah. And when he walked with him, what he, what he did, he said, he said, he told him, look, I'm not going to give you what you need, what you asked him for. Right, right. It's just like when you see those people, they decide to jump up and you ride on the expressway, you jump off the expressway and you wait, and all of a sudden they jump and start doing your windows for you and stuff like uh -huh. that, and they expect it for your money, or the kids playing on the buckets, they want the money. You right, know, people right. doing all kinds of things, or somebody just said, you know, uh, they got the gas can and say, you know, my, my kid in the car down the street and I just need some gas and all these weird things, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes it bad for the people who really actually, when they really do need it, right. you know? So, you know, so then we look at this and everyone walks through the church every day and they, they go, one Sunday, 
the next Sunday. You just keep dropping money into this bucket. But you think about it. In reality, when you're sick and you're dying and you're afraid that you're going to die, that you don't know when you're going to die, because when you have a crippling effect and you're sick in life, you never know how long you're going to live. Because now you're taking medications, and medications are triggering this and triggering that and breaking these and breaking that. It's doing more damage to your body than it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of healing you, it's doing damage. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, these two guys come. Instead of dropping money in the bucket and, and giving religious cliches and religious wordings and all this stuff, they say they, what they did, they yeah, some about in his upping. Some of it, somewhere of him coming up. That's prophetic in this way. Somewhere in his coming up. Mm -hmm. His elevation. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Somewhere in his elevation to his legs, mm -hmm. healing took place. You see, can you imagine somebody snatching you up and in your process of doing this, all of a sudden, because it said immediately. So all of a sudden, in his, in, in, in his quickness of snatching him up, Amen. and him coming up, his legs began to go. Mm -hmm. Muscles began to get, get strengthened. Veins began, blood began to flow to different veins that had never flowed before. Amen. Parts began to go to parts that had never been before. Hallelujah. Things began to take place in his body that never happened before. I can imagine him going, ah, ah. you know, can you imagine God healing you in that warm feeling and whatever, how it takes place when healing takes place. And this guy is like, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he's healed and he has no other choice but to run and say, wait a minute, uh, tell me I'm not dreaming. Tell me I'm not dreaming. Tell me I'm not dreaming. Oh, this is not true. This has got to be true. You know, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, can you imagine, as a kid, mm -hmm. as a baby, you had to be carried around or pushed in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, one day, your mama at church, mm -hmm. your daddy at church, because mm -hmm. they said the parents were there too. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, your son that everybody wrote off said that they would never be anything. Mm -hmm. Find himself back and forth in jail, dealing with all sickness and diseases. You kept going, God, why can't they hear when I'm praying for their souls, Lord, from, from going to hell? And all of a sudden, everything that possibly be, could possibly go wrong was going wrong in that child's life. And all of a sudden, it took two men to come along and say a word of encouragement, say something that will break the curse off that child's life. And what happened? When they broke that curse, all of a sudden, that child had nothing else to do with praise God because they spent many years in bondage. Imagine, many years in bondage, all of a sudden God set you free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because you were placed in the right place. And it took them to John and Paul just to realize if I listen to God and say what God says about these issues, then I, I, you know, then, then, then someone will be set free. Imagine if they ignored him. Imagine what this guy, if he probably got married after this. Anything could have happened after this. Imagine what would have happened to his seed if Paul and John never came by. Right. Amen. Think of what would have happened to this man if they never came by. Think about all the many souls, all the people lives that would have been messed up if they never came by. Right. Right. Imagine how that man, um, imagine how you would feel when your, when your child comes in and somebody told you they'll never walk again, all of a sudden they're running in the house. Imagine when they say, you look at the, you look at how they was in high school and grammar school, and you look at their job issues, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, you know, they ain't going to never be anything. We even wrote them off. We started cursing our kids. And all of a sudden they come in with a job that you were like, how did you get that job? What did you do? You know how we get all right, right, right. You, who, who? Okay, what's the catch? Mm -hmm. There was no catch. Mm -hmm. There was no time because his parents was like, you can imagine, they said, no, this is my son. This is my son. Can you imagine that? This is my son. He's not dead. This is my son. He's not this. He's not doing time. This is my son. This is this. This is my child. You know, I, I, I mean, they were looking like they had schizophrenia. They were looking like they were these, this demonic spirit had them. But then mm -hmm. Jesus stepped in and proved that there is nothing impossible. But Amen. the thing is to make it impossible. But it may seem that God is impossible. Yes, it's because we find ourselves allowing ourselves to sleep with any and everybody and let any and everybody sing to us and any and everybody speak to us. And when we do that, we don't know how to pray for our loved ones because we never realize that in the process of praying for my child, i got to pray for the stuff that they listen to. Amen. See, because the stuff they listen to can be the thing that's numbing their ears and desensitizing them to the voice of God. I pray and I pray and I pray. Why is rebellion? Why is they this? Why are the kids the way they are? The kids are the way they are because we don't know how to pray for our kids. We have to pray against the music. We have to pray against the, the video. There's a video, there's a movie coming out. And this movie is, is supposed to call it the coming of the age movie. And it has uh, Monique in it. And, 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 and uh, Isaiah Washington. You remember Isaiah Washington, the one that got blackballed because he called someone a homosexual. Right. And the coming of the age movie is a young man 
who's dealing with his manhood, dealing with his sexuality. Right, right. And dealing with his sexuality, he finds himself dabbling one minute with a woman, with a female, and the next minute with a male. But yet they showing this stuff on television, not, I mean not on TV, on this movie. And with this movie, people fail to realize, although it's just, they, they say, oh, it's just it's entertainment. What's happening is feeding your spirit, man, and it's planting seed. And now that you know, at some point, at some time, that's going to rewind itself somewhere in your life to the point that you can be walking down the street and wonder why that thought came from. You can be dreaming all of a sudden, wondering why you haven't dreamed about Barry and, you, and your name is Jack. Mm -hmm. Or your name is Jill, you haven't dreamed about Jill, and you're wondering, okay, and all of a sudden science begins to tell you, well, it's natural. It's not natural. Mm -hmm. What's taking place is we allowed ourselves to allow TV to have sex with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it causes us to have that bisexual spirit, and that bisexual spirit, which is the marine spirit, came in, and it begins to brainwash us to accept these. So that's why when we pray for our children, we have to break different curses. We have to be able to break these things. We got to say, God, we need you to, we need you to step in and, 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 and uh, remove this type of mu music. So that means that we got to start changing the music that we allow into the house. You know, what you listen to outside is on you. But then also we still got to pray and say, God, you know what? I, I need a better way to word that because what, what you listen to outside is very important. Because what happened is what you listen to outside and listen to in the house, once you get outside, that music you listen to outside will lead you straight to hell if anything happens to you. Right. You know, you got many people who call themselves Christians that listen to all kinds of uh, spiritual, they call it spiritual bisexual music, meaning that you can't tell which way the music goes. Mm -hmm. You even look at the artist and can tell the artist if the artist is gay nine times ten, the music is gay. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. And people don't know that because think about this. When you hear that word Christian music, Christian music is played in any place that says God. Mm -hmm. But the question is, which God? Is it Yahweh? Is it Jehovah? Mm -hmm. Or is it J is it Dagon? Mm -hmm. You see, we got to understand that there are many types of uh, versions of Christianity that was created by the Catholicism mm -hmm. to the point that when people start reading and doing their research and trying to get into the presence of God, they find it hard because what happened is the lies are there, so many lies to the point when the truth comes, they be like, you know what, I knew it was a lie, so I'm going to let it go. Amen? Amen. Let's read a couple more scriptures we're going to close. Amen? Amen. So let's, go, let's look over here at uh, Matthew 12, 45, and 43. I'm sorry, 43 to 45. It says, when an unclean spirit, verse 40, uh, Matthew 12, 43 to 45. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a what? Man. Man. He is what? He walks to a rough Uh-huh. Seeking rest and finding none. So he goes out of his, his six, uh, breath, but he finds none, right? Mm -hmm. 44 says, then he said, then he says, I will restore unto myself from whence I come from. Underline that, my house from whence I come from. And then it says, and when I come, and when he comes, he finds the house empty, swept, and garnished. That word garnished means uh, clean, cleaned out and decorated. Mm -hmm. Funny part about it is many of us, we look good on the outside. We even sometimes feel good on the inside. But the thing is, what's inside of you? Mm -hmm. What is inside of you that, that's, that's repelling or depelling or causing the enemy not to come inside? That's telling the enemy that he can't visit you. <clears throat> Notice how back in the day, it took our parents, it took something, I guess, to happen in our parents' lives. Mm -hmm. And then it happened in our lives to make us say, look, if you don't call, you can't come over and visit mm -hmm. You know that? You remember that? Mm -hmm. you remember that with Pops number one rule? Mm -hmm. If you don't call, you can't visit. Even if our friends just pop up, did you call? It's like, no, then you got to go. Right. It was embarrassing for us, but then we, as we got older, we realized that if you don't, you know, call, call first, because you don't know what I'm doing. Right. Right. But the thing is, but back in the day before our parents' parents, before our parents, that was that open door policy. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody get together, mm -hmm. and everybody can come over. Uncle stay down the street, so uncle could come over whenever he feel like it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and this person, so they had that open door policy. But then the older we got, the more our life got busy, the more perverted life got. Mm -hmm. We began to say, if you don't call, you can't come and visit. Right. Right. Because if I'm not here, you're not coming to be around my door. If I'm not here, you're not coming to be around my son. If I'm not here, you're definitely not going to be coming around my wife. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not the simple fact of insecurity. It's the simple fact of, you know, respect. Yeah. So, because some people take respect uh, out of context 
and they begin to run with it and think that it's being uh, you being uh, insecure. And it's not being insecure. It's the simple fact that you got to respect me. This is my house. I, I work too hard every day to come home and pay these bills just for somebody to come in and disrespect me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Because the house is the only place that you have your own comfort. It's the only place that you're supposed to have your comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Place that you go when the bosses get you upset, everybody, uh, all that. You should have some place in your house to live is a, just a closet. Yeah. To go in there and just go, uh, mm -hmm. you know, at least in the tub. When you're in the tub, at least you should have that moment of time just to be in that tub. Nobody knocking on the door. We got two bathrooms. Nowhere in the world nobody needs to be knocking on the tub bathroom when we got two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? When I'm soaking. Amen. <laughs> so then it says the unclean spirit comes out. But then it says there comes a point where it comes back. Why? Because they never put some type of sign or told the enemy that he can't come back. It's almost like that at uh, the Detroit law, where if you stay away from your home long enough, that squatter law, mm -hmm. you stay away from your house long enough, somebody to come in and start, uh, you know, living in your house even though you got all your stuff in there. Mm -hmm. They had a guy that even chose, sold somebody else's property because they were gone for a certain length of time. Mm -hmm. When he got the, uh, the paperwork to do it, he did it. It was, it was legal. Mm -hmm. I don't know how legal it was, but it was, you know, it was done. Somebody bought that house that somebody else stayed in and had their stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Wow. What am I saying? I'm saying that we got to understand that these demonic spirits attach themselves. Do you know what takes place in your womb when you're birthing? Yeah. But we quickly hear people say, I'm birthing something in the spirit realm. Well, if you're birthing something in the spirit realm, you need to be really deep into the word of God so you can be able to protect whatever it is you're birthing. If there's a such thing of birthing something in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful of these cliches and these words are being said and spit out in churches. It sounds good. It sounds happy. It sounds all wow. But the thing is, in reality, we got to pay close attention to these words and cliches that we're hearing because these words and stuff we're saying could put a curse on us, and we think it's all good, and in reality, we wonder why all this happened. And God said, you spoke that on your life. You said you wanted it. You said you wanted to birth this in the spirit. Yeah. And you realize you have no understanding. Nine times out of ten, people who talk about things in the spirit have no idea about the things in the spirit. Right. They talk about open heaven. The question is, if you talk about an open heaven, which heaven? Right. Remember? Right. Because you gotta remember the devil came to God, but then there's different heavens. Right. Yeah. You got the sky, which is what we look at, that's considered a heaven according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. The fowls of the air, and they talked about the heavens. Right. Then you got the first, second, third heavens. You got these heavens. Mm -hmm. The question is, you gotta go through a demonic, you gotta go through these demonic force. People quick to think, oh, the devil isn't down here. But you gotta remember, the globe is brown. So if down here could reality be up here because if I'm in China, China if China is down here, when China says down here they're talking about us, then in reality aren't we both pointing up? Mm -hmm. You'll get there later. Yeah, we pointing at each other. But we keep talking about open heaven and we talk about oh I was at church and dust fell. I'm, I'm, if I see dust falling and somebody tried to tell me that God, I need to see some scripture. I need God to really speak to me, deal with me in these areas because I want to know if something's falling on me and it's called gold dust then why can't God just give me a gold bar? Amen. Why can't God give me something? What, what's the purpose of this gold dust? Nobody ever tells us that, you know, they got delivered. They never tell us what takes place. They just say it fell on them. Uh -huh. So how I know that somebody could have been in the balcony just throwing this out there? Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to stay away from these black and highly favored and all these different sayings because we can place a curse on our lives just by saying it. Amen? Now, I want to I leave you with this, okay? <clears throat> So you want to leave you with this? I want to leave you with this. Now, take, let's, let's look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So, um, let me see. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, we talk about generational radio blood and church curses, right? Did you get anything out of this so far? Amen. 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 Okay, okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remind, remind you that we're uh, Second Chance Gifts of Deliverance Ministry located at 906 South Cottage Grove. Uh, order of service Sunday, 11, Thursday, 6 p.m. Amen. 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 And you can catch us on the radio station. Just check Facebook. You'll find us. Or just Google my name or the church. You'll find it. Well, all the different things. Anyway, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So I go, notice that generational hereditary and bloodline curses are spiritual things that actually take place in the natural and natural things that take place in the spiritual. Uh -huh. All right? Because the things that happen in our blood, we can't see. We only we can only feel the reaction in the natural, right? Or see the reaction in the natural because it causes sickness and diseases when it's infected, right? Right. 
so 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 it, 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 when we go bloodline curses that pass down uh, in the DNA, mental, physical, spiritual, generational curses, uh, it's like uh, religion or tradition. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Notice that in Genesis six, two and two through eight. Genesis six two through eight. In Genesis six two through eight, it says, <coughs> not this. It spoke of how the fallen angels married the daughters of God. Right? You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. And how the, how, the, how the giants came into the earth, right? right? And then God said that the earth was so messed up to the point he made a man that he even made man. You remember that? Right. This is in uh, Genesis 6, 2-8. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's look at this. So at some point, so, so it said, after the sin entered to the earth, and the giants were birthed, and he repented God, he had made man. Now let's look over at uh, 1 Samuel 17-4. 1 Samuel uh, uh, 17 and 4 speaks of David and Goliath. But it speaks about David, I'm sorry, it speaks of Goliath of God. Now, David, David uh, now notice that if you look at here, right here, I could have put that, but I don't know why I didn't. Uh -huh. But you notice that when we go into 1 Samuel, it's after the flood occurred. Right. Oh, okay. Okay? Right. So because the flood took some place in what? In uh, mid part of, uh, how about to say November? <laughs> mid part of, uh, of Genesis and. And, uh, or is it Exodus? I forget where. It's so anyway. So yeah, so Noah had the flood, right? And God had the flood because of the sin that took you in the earth, right? Right. Notice that that flood represents what? A weather-related issue. Right. Because it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained for a long time until it flooded the earth. And anything that had breath in its lungs died. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. So what happened? So notice that all this perversion took place. God caused the flood to come into the land, right? Mm -hmm. But there were giants in the land. And the flood took place, right? Uh -huh. But then no one ever tells us about this flood. Uh, then all of a sudden, next you know, next time they speak of another giant is David and Goliath. But then as we go into First Samuel, it starts telling us about David. I mean, talk about Goliath's bloodline. Mm -hmm. That the Goliath had that he had brothers. Mm -hmm. So then when we go over to Second Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Samuel, two. Let's go over there. Let's, somebody go over to Second Samuel twenty-one. Second Samuel twenty-one. It's verse 18, verse 20, and verse 22. And when you get there, someone read that real quick. 21, 18. 18. Yeah, 2 Samuel 21, verse 18, verse 20, and verse 22. Read it loud and slow. 18. It came to pass. Uh -huh. After this, that there was a hand of battle with the Philistines uh -huh. and Gulf. Right. Then Sabigal, who shot white, slew south. Uh-huh. Which was of the sons of the giant. Okay, what is it? What was it? He slew the uh, son of the giant, right? To the son of the giant. Th that was Goliath's children, one of Goliath's sons, that uh, that he cut, that he uh, he slew. Okay, read uh, twenty, verse twenty. And where was yet a battle in God? Uh-huh. Where was a man of That's where the giants were from God. That's why he called him uh, Goliath of God. Okay, God. Where was a man of great stature mm -hmm. that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. Okay, so he was born to a giant again. Keep going. And when he did when he defiled Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shema, uh -huh. the brother of David, slew him. Okay, so then we can go, so notice that, that we had a flood that was supposed to kill them giants, but all of a sudden the giants pop up again. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, you got to remember, the giants were seeds of demonic forces, right. okay? They call them Nephilim, and there are different names for demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. I mean, the different demonic spirits, the different giants. They had Goliath, and if, you know, if you ever people see people talk about UFOs and uh, different things, well, those are called demonic spirits, and there are different types of demonic spirits. There are some that are human form. There are some in different forms. That's why you, you see, feel, or or hear certain things when you went by yourself, and you have, these, or you have these crazy dreams. These, these demonic spirits either come into your dreams, or they actually dare you walk in because they're called.